नमस्कार दर्शकों आई एम विभूति झा दिस इज जयपुर डायलॉग यूएसए एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मैटर एंड दैट इंपॉर्टेंट मैटर इज दैट वी हिंदू अमेरिकन्स वी इंडियन अमेरिकन्स हैव नेवर सॉट अ पॉलिटिकल एजेंडा इन अमेरिकन इलेक्शंस वी कंट्रीब्यूट वेरी हैंडसमली टू द local legislators and senatorial elections congressional elections presidential elections but more often than not we don't end up having a demand list of ourselves what do we want why are we participating in this election this has been my you know anger with ourselves that we have not set our own agenda we don't know what to ask for today i'm delighted to talk about that hindu pact an organization has defined a few points that is going to be the hindu agenda for the us elections in november 5 on november 5 and to talk about this i have really wonderful pleasure in wel- welcoming two sources of light i may, i may say so you know and that is deepthi mahajan and uh, deepak kartik namaste both of you to welcome on the show and uh, uh, deepthi mahajan is the co-convener of hindu pact and uh, deepa kartik ji is director of hindu vote it's it sounds so great for me I'm, you have no idea how happy i am that for once we have an agenda or you have created an agenda so tell us in a quick brief what is hindu pact when did it come into being uh, deepthi ji i will start with you so tell us about hindu pact and uh, w- what was the inspiration for doing this uh, agenda namaste vibhuti ji thank you so much for giving us uh, this platform today and namaste to all your viewers uh, giving a quick background of hindu pact so hindu pact is a is an initiative of vishv hindu parishad or world hindu council as we know it and uh, there was a yeah, just, need- just 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 one interruption vishwa hindu parishad of america not vhp india that's right that's correct vishwa hindu correct. parishad of well, america vhp um and we have named it uh, renamed it uh, world hindu council uh, to make it more global now uh, the uh, background is that we needed more hindu advocacy like the, uh, how you started right that there was never an agenda with which we worked uh, in political arena or in social arena so hindu pact has been working on um, many projects that raise our voices it raises our concerns it gives a platform for raising awareness about lot of uh, uh, you know contemporary issues and the issues that have been on uh the minds of lot of people so if we talk about some of the projects uh, there's uh, chingari that is coalition for hindu girls abducted and their rights we raise awareness with the lawmakers in america and i also work globally on this issue with other countries and people in who are concerned about minorities living in pakistan who are losing their daughters every single day so that is one project that we run we have uh, american america hindu against um, defamation which is the only and the oldest platform that raises voice against um, uh, hindu defamation across the globe uh, hindu vote is one of our most recent initiatives where uh, you know like you rightfully said as a voter i honestly did not know i've been voting in the us elections for a couple of um, uh, rounds now and it has been confusing uh, who do i how do i know if uh, people i'm voting are standing for my rights or not right like do they have my concerns on their uh, agenda so it you it used to be a cheat sheet like oh uh, you know asking your friends who did you vote for so let me just go and vote for them so hindu vote is one of those initiatives that we will be uh, talking about today and then there are a couple of other uh, initiatives that we have or projects we have under hindu pact is we run a weekly show called hindu lounge uh, where we take up all the contemporary issues just like how 
uh, Bangladeshi uh, Hindu are uh, getting uh, persecuted right now. So that is uh, one, I hate to call it a hot topic, but that is something which is on our minds these days. Uh, there is another project called HAHRI. So if you go on hindupag.org, you can see all the um, named and really relevant projects that we are working on. Thank you. Thank you. That was a that was a very interesting thing that you said that we did not even know who to vote for, who is standing up for us. And, you know, Deepaji, I'm very delighted that you are director of Hindu vote. You know, you have no idea how happy I am to note a very clear definition or distinction that you have made about Hindu vote. I'll tell you why. That will give you the background of it. During 2020 election, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib in the Georgia election, prior to that election, they had gone absolutely vocal that it is the moral obligation, ethical obligation, religious obligation of every Muslim to vote for Biden. Right? And nobody said a word. Nobody said a word that such a religious fanatical call asking Muslims to vote for a particular party. And I had said at that time, wonder what would have happened to the American media if Hindus had made that declaration, a similar declaration, that all Hindus must vote for candidate X. That would have been termed as a Hindutva and influence of Hindutva trying to manage influence American elections. So tell us about the need for Hindu votes coming together. How are you mobilizing it? I understand the concept definitely, but I want you to talk about it as, as strongly as you can. Don't feel afraid to say so. Dhanyavad Vibhuti ji, uh, Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. I am very glad, uh, you know, to come here and speak with you and your viewers, Vibhuti ji. Uh, as well as I am very, very grateful to Hindu Pact uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak about Hindu vote. Right? You touched upon uh, many important points that I'm going to quickly uh, go through here so that, uh, you know, your viewers get an idea of the initiative that we have started. But before I proceed, I have to provide a disclaimer as I am an elected official as well, a publicly elected official. So everything that I'm expressing here are my personal views and are not the views of the South Brunswick Board of Education to which I'm elected currently. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing that, that you are part of Board of Education and you know, totally respect fundamental right, freedom of speech. You have that. So please go ahead. Thank you. So, uh, Vibhuti ji, you touched upon a very important point about uh, Hindus not having an agenda while voting, right? So, I think this is something that's very, very... We were talking about the poten potential uh, technical... Request you to repeat what you said because you went away totally. Okay. Are, are you able to hear me now? Yeah, now it is better. Go ahead. Okay. So we have developed an eight-point Hindu um, American Hindu agenda for the election of 2024. Okay. This is available on our website for everybody to see. Um, I wish I can share this here through a screen share, but I'm not sure if I can do that. But there are eight important points that uh, you know that we will be presenting uh, to the American Hindus based on which we have come up with the Hindu agenda for 2024. And this eight point agenda has been derived by speaking to multiple advocacy organizations that represent interests of Hindus across the United States. Okay, uh, one of the key points is that we want to support those legislators that are going to support an anti-Hindu phobia legislation for us. We want uh, we want legislators that are going to support a fair admissions act. You know, uh, you may have heard of the affirmative uh, action case that uh, that hurts Indian Americans. Uh, I'm all, we are also looking at uh, making sure that legislators support uh, those uh, legislation. That, uh, that help us in repatriation of some of our old artifacts. 
so there is a eight point agenda that that you know that uh, uh, that our uh, hindu brothers and sisters can uh, have a look at it's available on our website and as i said again this has been derived by uh, talking to multiple uh, hindu advocacy organization across united states we had multiple sessions uh, you know we're refining our agenda etc and now we publish it ultimately great now i for the benefit of the listeners the eight agendas that uh, you know Deepthi ji shared with me are about Hindu hate on Hindu temples, legal immigration, fairness in education and employment, human rights, historic artifacts, foreign policy and environment. Now, you know, in terms of, you know, we always rank our values, you rank our priorities, you know, all these eight items are important in their own way. Which one do you think? you need to focus on a lot more than the others because we can't distribute we can't focus on all of them at the same time so which is your favorite that you must focus on dipti ji i'll begin with you on that yeah i think uh, that's that gives that eight uh, point agenda gives everybody a voice vibhuti right so for me personally uh, hindu phobia is an extremely important thing that is on my mind keeping all the you know temple vandalism the global uh, uh conference against uh, hindutva these are the things that have happened in last couple of years like not being able to use our festive symbols um our kids uh reading you know i i for a lack of words i'll use nonsensical stuff about our uh, history our um our, our culture our religion in schools and being mocked of uh, because of those things so this uh, hindu phobia is something which is uh, very very important for me personally but this uh, eight pronged agenda gives everybody you know a, a chance to identify what is important for them like the, you might be concerned about your immigration rights you might be concerned about environment you might be concerned about uh, hindus uh, uh, being uh, targeted globally or in the us so this agenda gives that uh, holistic approach where where you know everybody will find a niche uh, everybody will find their peace of mind yes this is important for me but for me personally fighting hindu phobia is something that is very very uh, dear to my heart uh, thank you very much and i totally agree with that because recently indian american muslim council had come out with a survey it is so ridiculous they have collected you know what is known as popularly known as data that the, 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 it is us our behavior and our attitude that makes them suffering in this country not their own actions but we whatever we do creates a problem for us so we are we are the promoters of hate against islam that's a different matter we'll talk about that later on but deepa ji you are part of the board of education in new jersey and you must be seeing these things so i applaud you for taking the leadership role both of you ladies taking the leadership role in getting into this process because school education the phobia starts from there calling bhagwan hanuman as monkey god or uh, you know things like that insulting our you know very concept of murti puja without understanding what it is so share with us with your experiences as board of education where you encountered any issue and how did you deal with that if you don't want to talk about it i you are free to do so uh vibhuti ji uh, i will just touch upon uh you know one aspect of this hindu agenda that we that we want to speak about as dipti ji pointed out this takes care of a lot of uh, voices of hindus across united states and issues that are important to them right uh and as dipti and uh, you asked a question as to which is my favorite or my most top of the you know uh, top of the agenda which is my uh top pick here is hindu phobia because hindu phobia manifests in different ways right it manifests in expression in daily life it manages in academics it manifests in um, you know in politics it ma manifests in uh, foreign policy so in various ways we can see hindu phobia manifesting 
So I think that uh, legislation is most important to me personally. Uh, but we have this eight-point agenda to ensure that we take care of a lot of other concerns of other Hindu Americans, uh, you know, so that we uh, we uh, we want to make sure that we give everybody a voice. Talk, let's talk about immigration. You know, there's something which is again very close to my heart because we are all immigrants in this country and nobody is anti-immigrants. Let's put it that way. None of us are anti-immigrants, but there is a backlog of H-1B. The Democratic Party continuously talks about the human rights, immigration rights and welcoming immigrants to this part of the world. But nobody, nobody seems to be talking about a very qualified, employed people who are on H-1B and they do not know when they will get their green card and nobody talks about that. Nobody even mentions them in a, in a fleeting glance that, hey, I'm going to regularize this, let everybody else come. But there are these half a million people or a million people who are living in a limbo with their children, but nobody talks about it. What's your agenda on that? Both of you are, you know, I invite both of you to comment on that. So I, I can uh, give a couple of points here, Vuduji. Like you rightfully said, right? There are highly skill, skilled uh, people that we are talking about. Uh, people who spend most of their childhood dreaming about higher education, coming here with the right intention of making a difference. We see uh, people from India who have immigrated here in, uh, in the United States they are making a difference in every single field of work. And, uh, you know, most successful people, like we see, uh, see all the CEOs of major organizations, but they have worked hard to get here. So the people that we are talking about who are struggling with this immigration issue, their spouses, their kids, like you said, they are in a limbo. They don't know you are out of job. You have to leave the country immediately or in a certain amount of uh, time with you know uh, debt on their uh, on their uh, hands and um, leaving a life behind that they thought they will build and we are talking about lawfully uh, immigrated people who legally came here who are uh, highest taxpayers and who are law abiding citizens always have a good intention in mind and uh, over the period of uh, years, I've heard horror stories from people who have, you know, uh, lost their jobs and their immigration status. They have to immediately go back. So you are looking at these people who are trying to make a difference in a day to day life in America, making a day, you know, making a change or impact on the bottom line of, of America. So rightfully, we, we have, uh, you know, the right to ask um, uh, the U.S. lawmakers to what they are doing with this uh, with this issue. I'm going to uh, pass it to Deepa and see what her uh, um, thoughts are. Yeah, thank you, Deepti ji. I think, uh, you know, everything that you said resonates with me, Deepti. Uh, I understand, you know, that I have personally been in that situation uh, where... Uh, you know, uh, where I had to leave the country because of uh, visa issues, etc. So I feel the pain of uh, many uh, immigrant uh, families from India. We, in our agenda, we are certainly looking for legislators to support fairness in immigration policies, especially for highly skilled workers who have been here for a long time, who've not got a path to citizenship simply because of a backlog that we are not able to clear. Right? These are all uh, tax paying law abiding citizens. Uh, they contribute to our economy. They contribute to the strength of America. So, uh, you know, expediting their uh, long term stay in the United States and giving them uh, the due process is really in everybody's interest. So we are looking for uh, for legislation that supports this, uh, you know, that supports this thought process and puts this into ultimate action, because I think it's been long overdue. That's very true. Long overdue. That's a very important part. You also talked about the Hindu phobia part of it, which is critical because we are victims. We are we are suddenly made a victim of the whole thing. Our temples are attacked viciously. I mean, as late as a few days ago, uh, BAPS temple in Melville, in my neighborhood, was vandalized. 
with very ugly words mentioned and attacked, uh, the temple was attacked. Tell us about this one. How is our outreach? You see, we are very different than the established religious practices. We are very different. And I, I, I mentioned to some of my American friends that, you know, they asked me, what do you mean by saying you are not a religion and a way of life? And I said to them something very simple. I said, listen, we have rituals, we have processes, but as a religious practitioners, we have taken the next step, which takes us into the domain of spirituality. Doesn't mean that we are not religious practitioners, our religion, our dharma. And I use the word dharma to define our faith. How do you propose and how do you, what are you doing about educating the mainstream media, including ourselves, our own people who are kind of lackadaisical to say the word about our own faith, Janmandir Jake, Thora Kuch Kardo, you know, that kind of a stuff, instead of taking it seriously, the process, there is an importance to mantra. There is an importance to Pandit who is performing the rituals. There are certain importance of these elements that we don't even know. That's a big task. That's a big ask. So protecting our temple is the beginning point for protecting our own identity. This will be the last query for the day. What are you specifically doing about it? Uh, both with ref in addition to asking their local law authorities to protect our places of worship, what are we doing with our own community to inspire them to action? So, Bhutiji, I think uh, the first point uh, from a religious perspective, just the concept of Vasudev Kutumbukam, you know, that explains our religious sentiments and as well as uh, the way of life, the dharma that we talk about, that we, we as Hindus, we consider everybody as our family. Now, there is a tie that, you know, every individual has, uh, which is very strong, is our temples. Our temples are where, you know, with it, uh, it gives us a space to uh, express our uh, our community feeling. It gives us a space to connect with, uh, you know, our spirit, spiritual being. The attacks on these temples, I think that was something that has shaken up people tremendously in the last couple of years because that is something which is uh, basically, you know, an attack on your identity as, as a Hindu, as a human being. Um, Hindu Pact having the largest um, connect with all the temples in the United States or I would say North America, uh, if you know that we just had uh, earlier this year, we had this whole Ram Rath Yatra where we took uh, Ram Lala to every single temple in North America. So Hindu Pact is one organization that has that connection with every single mandir. Uh, this coming weekend, Deepa, Deepa and I are in the HMEC conference uh, in Raleigh where you know we have uh, uh, hundreds of temples coming together where we empower them. So our ask and one of the uh, one of the um, uh, one of the ask from people and from our temples is to make sure that your outreach uh, with those temples can impact Hindu vote. People can you know set up polling booths. They can um, do a better outreach because there are more people associated with these temples. We are talking about more than 1,100 temples across the, across the country. And uh, I, I'll let Deepa also chime in uh, on that part, part of the Hindu vote uh, initiative. Thank you. Deepa ji, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Vibhuti ji, for this most important question that you have asked, right? Mandirs, our devalayams, our devastanams, they are the linchpin of our community, right? They bring all Hindus together, no matter what sampradaya you follow, which guru, you know, which gurus, upadesha you're following. Temples and our devalayams are the place, devastanams are the place where everybody comes. We are requesting, so what we have done is through Hindu vote, we are empowering mandirs uh, to understand how they can be involved in the voting process without uh, violating any of their non-profit uh, status, 
right? So what we're doing is, it see, it's very difficult for the mandir trustees, etc., to go around looking for legal advice, trying to understand how to organize themselves. We are providing an entire set, like a standard operating procedure, if you will, or a easy to refer, a kind of a, you know, a quick reference guide of how can you organize yourself to mobilize Hindu votes. Up until now, as you know, Hindus have never voted based on the uh, dharmic lens, what is important to dharma, right? So we right. are giving, we are giving, uh, uh, you know, uh, our uh, Sanatani brothers and sisters food for thought. This is how you need to think. This is how you need to sort of, this is, this is the way you should be probably evaluating your legislators. And for that, we have launched a website called Elections 2024, a Hindu vote, which is an absolutely amazing, amazing initiative, Vibhuti ji. I would be so delighted to give you a quick walkthrough of it in a minute to help you understand how we are really empowering the Hindu voter on the ground. The Hindu uh, vote uh, initiative does not try to sway a Hindu voter. It only tries to bring awareness. That's all. Uh, nowhere in our initiative have we, are we directing a particular uh, way of thought or a particular way of thinking. We are bringing awareness to the Hindu voter based on legislation that has been passed earlier. We are bringing information at the click of a button to a Hindu voter to understand who are the legislators who supported legislation that support your Hindu community. And Brilliant. Is, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. We finish, finish your sentence. And this is available to, to all of us uh, in a, on a website. Uh, you know, if you put in your zip code, uh, I, I, I don't know if you're okay with me presenting here and if it would dis if it's okay. Uh, it will just you have to put your zip code. It will show your uh, who your legislator for your particular district is. Uh, it will give uh, us a lot of details about the uh, the candidate. It will give us funding details, which are the packs that have, uh, have supported uh, that particular candidate. It will give us a history of all the legislate uh, legislation that they have either supported, voted up, voted down, or abstained from voting. It also gives us information about. What is their relation to various packs and how are they, how is the money flowing? Which sort of tells you a story of how are they likely to vote in the future, right? Uh, and lastly, and most importantly, two aspects. We are trying to build a two-way communication between our legislators uh, and between uh, the Hindu voter. By which I mean, we are sending out from Hindu vote a, a questionnaire to the candidate. The entire process is automated. The candidate can fill in this particular, can click on a link, fill in the uh, fill in his or her responses, which get populated on our website directly, and a voter gets to based on uh, on the interaction a voter has had with the legislator or what they are reading about their particular legislator, the voter has an opportunity to survey that particular candidate based on a dharmic lens. So now you have built a two way communication street. So now the legislators know that, hey, there is a Hindu community out there that is important, that can flip my ballot, right? That can make an impact. And this is how they are wanting to engage. They don't want a one-way communication. They are building a two-way communication path. So the legislators are, uh, will get to know if Hindu voters view them favorably or not. And we get to know whether a legislator is favorable to a Hindu community or not that's that's so so awesome and i'm so proud of both of you you know ladies and gentlemen who are watching this show or who will watch it later i want you to notice here here are two ladies who have taken the leadership role in for a cause for a hindu cause hindu identity protecting and defending our own dharma and these are remarkably ordinary ladies you know both Deepti ji and Deepa ji are, you know, committed to the role and responsibility. And I'm very proud of you, Deepa ji, and both of you, and Deepa ji, particularly because you have taken this Board of Education role. That's something which is very dear to me. I implore upon every single Indian parent, get involved with your education process because it all begins from there. Start with PTA and take the march upwards because that's where the corruption of the mind begins. The misinformation about the mind begins. 
destruction of our identity happens. So ladies, thank you very much for joining today. I want to encourage everybody watching that follow the path of Deepa Ji and Dipti Ji. Do something, get involved, get engaged, and make a difference. Sitting by the sideline, talking about it on WhatsApp groups takes you nowhere. Let's be very clear about that. So unless and until you act, nothing happens. And my favorite thing, which I often talk about in my shows is, knowledge, wisdom is great. But if you do not act on that knowledge and wisdom, then you are failing yourself. Because you, it, that means that knowledge and wisdom means nothing. So thank you very much for joining. The, we will try to put the, you know, the Hindu agenda on the Jaipur Dialogue website. And you know, I would urge everybody to visit. Make your money count. Make your votes matter. And the particular project which you have just heard, put in your zip code, and you will know about your legislator, how he votes. Demand reciprocity. If I'm giving you my money and my vote, what are you doing for me? Nothing wrong in asking that tough question. Because unless you ask, you don't get. This is America. So thank you very much for joining today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and support our channel. Give your feedback. That's what makes us better. And as I always say, Satya Me Vijayate, for truth to triumph, you got to stand for it and fight for it. Otherwise, truth will wither by the way by the wayside. Thank you, both of you. Thank you very much. Namaste.